even some cad yellow light. I normally paint on an easel, but I thought since this was such a small picture, I would just tape it to my little table stand here, but it's, yeah. Just make it a little bit of rattling sound when I paint. That's all right. Okay, I'm, I, I, I gotta fix that red. It's just bugging me. All right, so on the color wheel, let's just go ahead and talk about color. So we have our three primary colors, which is red, yellow, and blue. So if I take red and blue, I'm going to get a purple. Take blue and yellow. Ah, I get green. And then, of course, when I take red and yellow, I am going to get orange. So that's our basic color wheel. Primary and secondary colors. So, on the color wheel... These are the complementary colors. Green is the complement of red. So I know if I've got too much red here, short of just you know wiping this off and laying another color on it, I can start working in some other colors into it. So in this case, I'm just gonna take some green and work that into the red. And lizard and crimson is a very powerful color. It might be, but I just have to do some wiping off here in a minute. It's not a completely bad thing to have a little bit of green in this background. Yeah. Bob Ross would call that a happy accident. I wasn't intending on putting that much green in this, but I kind of like that idea. A little impressionistic greenery there. All right, so that's my, um, that's my basic lay down of color. And I got to go back and cover up where I did these. Little sample outlines here. Okay, so that's that's step one. You got to get your whole canvas covered, and then from here, this is where I'm going to start. Um, this is where I'm going to start uh, taking my Q-tips and wiping off and creating. Um, this is a, a reference photo from Unsplash. Um, mine isn't really exactly like this. I just liked the uh, the colors that I was seeing in here. I just wanted a little bit of a reference for that. So what I want to be doing now is I want to be pulling out some highlights here and then I'll either go back and re-add some color or just, you know, leave them like they are. Um, let me go ahead and get, I've got my larger Q-tips, but because some of these are finer uh, twigs and sticks in here, I'm going to grab some uh, pointed Q-tips. I unloaded all of my uh, boxes that I did a art residency a week and a half or so ago and they're right behind me here and I keep having this fear of stepping back to grab something like my q-tips here we go my q-tips and falling down <laughs> and y'all hearing this big crash in the background and be like golly Vicky clean up your studio so right now you can't see what's going on in the background and that's probably a good thing all right so let me uh get my Little stool here, see if I can keep from knocking over my iPad. All right, now I'm ready to do that. This is the, this is the fun stuff. A friend of mine called this this part I just did. That's eating your vegetables. This now this is the dessert part. This is where we get to do the fun stuff. We get to take Q-tips and start creating sticks. Basically what I'm going to do is start with, this is going to be like the center bottom of my um, of my bird's nest. I'm just starting to pull out some, some lines here to create the, the sticks. 
This has got kind of a flat edge. Let me see if I can use Yeah, that works. Let's see if I can use that. I would have liked for them to have been a little bit more blue in that, so I'll probably have to come back in and, you know, add some, add some more color to that. I'm going to throw that Q-tip away and grab another pointed one. Um, the Q-tips, I keep calling them Q-tips. I better say cotton swabs. These cotton swabs are uh, the cosmetic cotton swabs. I get these generally at like a family dollar or dollar general. They've got the pointed edge on them, and it, it really helps to pull out finer lines. The other cotton swabs that I use, these are my favorites. These are Swispers from Walmart. Um, they just they just have like the perfect tip on them as far as you know. It's not it's not too soft. It's not too hard. It's just right. They're like you know the baby bear, I guess, of the of the cotton swabs. So I'm gonna start kind of making some longer lines here as I pull out my nest. And I want to be thinking about the shape that I'm making here, the way that I'm pulling these off. Throw that Q-tip away, grab another one. Throw that Q-tip away, grab another one. If my hand has been covering up, I'll try doing a few left-handed. Let's see if that will help you to see a little better what I'm doing. Now I want to start thinking about there's a lot of twigs that are kind of going outside of the line here. Okay, that line was a little too fat. This is easy to fix. I'll just take I've got enough paint on there that I can rub. Yeah, let's just move the thing around. I can rub the uh, paint back together and just restart that little section. Basically, what I want to try to do is just overlap these as I'm going around. And I can come back on some of these that I've pulled out, especially these right around the very top tier, that these are going to be the really light ones. I can come back in. And go back over them. I'm going to try dipping my tip of my cotton swab into a little bit of mineral spirits. Yeah, see that will even take off more and really create a nice highlight. So let me try doing that on this upper area here. Now this is a case where what I was talking about laying down the color. I, uh, I should have put some yellow ochre in here so Let's see what happens if I just go ahead and do that now. If I just come back in, I just get some straight yellow ochre. Oops, there I go with the wrong brush handle there. All right, so I've got a little yellow ochre in there now. I'm going to take my cotton swab. Yeah, I'm probably just going to have to end up adding color which I was going to have to do anyway but you know if you think ahead like the way that I, I admire watercolorists because they think ahead when they paint I don't always think ahead um, I mean I talked about it a while ago but as I was teaching this I just I thought that the burnt sienna was going to be just fine and it's not making me happy so I just going to be adding having to add the yellow ochre in manually Right there where there's a lot of the mineral spirits juice, I can come back and kind of wipe that off and that will also help. There we go, make it even brighter right through here. Another trick that I use for really fine lines is I put my uh, paint brushes in a pencil sharpener. And I get a point on them and then you can get even finer lines or you can scratch out you know highlights I can get these really small twigs in here and you can see how quickly this painting is coming together 
not rocket science. have my um, when I'm working at my easel my, my paint is normally more upright and I'm hoping that I'm not getting a glare so let me uh, let me just check that with you guys I'm gonna look at my iPad screen and see if I need to move my bird's nest up some yeah it seems to be working okay Hello, everybody. All right, let me, uh, let me get back to work here. Another thing we need to think about is uh, we don't want just a, a floating bird's nest. That would be, that'd just be weird. So I want to think about uh, where I want my, my branches to rest. some smaller ones coming out from under there just kind of making things up as I go happy little bird's nest and one of my one of my favorite sayings from Joyce Hall is it's just paint nobody dies there's no reason to be intimidated by this. It's just having fun with color. I mean, you know, it's not like I'm trying to find a cure for cancer or, you know, that somebody's life depends on this. It's just paint. Just relax and enjoy the, uh, the process. What I'm doing back there is just kind of smudging it a little so that it doesn't look like these are just like cookie cutter branches stopping and starting right by the bird's nest. It, you know, you kind of can't really tell where one ends and the other begins. And so let me just scratch out a few more here. And we'll start adding some more paint to this and carve out our eggs. What I want to do is I want to put three eggs in here, but I don't want to do that until I've got all of these lines done. Because if I carve out all the eggs, then it's going to hinder, you know, my my flow as far as how I'm drawing these uh, twigs in here. This lower area, they're not going to be quite as bright. And also, too, as I'm pulling the paint off, you're going to see that, you know, that burnt umber and ultramarine blue, that nice dark color that I want it down there. Something to differentiate it so that you're kind of, you know, looking at the, the bottom and the side of the, uh, the bird's nest. I'm using a lot more pointed Q-tips than I thought that I would, but then I guess that's because I'm working on such a, a smaller uh, canvas. All right, I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be right back.